This video is brought to you by Tile, a great product that actually helps you find whatever it is you've lost. Let's say you're on tour. Some gear gets stolen. If you have a sticker on there and an app on your phone, you can find it. You'll always losing your keys or your phone? Tile can help you out with that too. Click the link down below in the description. You'll help out the channel and you'll help out yourself. Now on to the show. I did play trombone as well for a little bit. Took a break to uh, focus on my trombone playing. And then <laughs> also dabbling a little guitar here and there, but mainly drums. And I've also been in three bands, I want to say. And I, I would say this is the best one. <laughs> oh, OK, sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> If you're enjoying the content Room 6 is putting up, please make sure you subscribe down there and hit the bell so you don't miss an episode. While you're at it, feel free to like and share, and uh, yeah, let's go. Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to the local Las Vegas music scene and the people that make it, including me. I'm Josh, and today I'm very excited to welcome to Room 6 a band whose sound they've described as alternative slash indie slash pop rock slash blues slash emo slash everything. Um, you may know them from their May 24th quarantine concert on Facebook or from their number one single in my head on National Indie Radio's Hot Top 10 and Las Vegas' own 94.1 FM. They've been a featured artist in Whale Music Magazine, and I'm so glad they took the time to talk to me today. Please welcome to the show, Isolated Ab. Hey, guys. Hey, hey. How's, it going? how's it going? Hey. Number one, is it Isolated Avenue or Isolated Ab? Isolated Ab, but you can say whatever you want. I messed that up. When I so freaking pretentious. I'm just kidding. <laughs> awesome. So uh, right off the bat, I got to ask, wh where'd the name come from? Because I didn't see that in any of my research. Uh, me and Matt lived in a house on the east side of town by Sunrise Mountain, and that was like a street over. And I'm terrible with names. So I was driving one day. I was like, well, that's it. <laughs> that's all I got on that. It's not, it's not, not a rich backstory. Fair enough. I've, I've, got, I've had a band on called Stanley Avenue for the same reason. So you, you should do a show together <laughs> um, whenever that happens. So uh, whose dog is that on the album covers of Getaway, Younger, and The Real Thing? Uh, that is just a stock. <laughs> I have a run with, uh, Disappointed. I wanted a huge story like, oh, yeah, it was a rescue I found on like, an alley and saved my baby's life or whatever. <laughs> 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 right on um your recent quarantine concert showcased three additional members one of which was savannah of the band on horns percussion and keyboards were were they also craigslist finds no <laughs> <laughs> um i've actually been friends with dylan which is the one in the back there um since high school and so he asked if i could kind of play at one of their shows back in february and then, then I was just playing on one of the songs, and then they had me come back for the virtual concert. Um, so that's my story, and then I'm not sure what the other two horns players, but... Right on. Yeah. Um, we'll get to them in a little bit. I, and you actually um, pointed out, I, I, I've been remiss. Go ahead and introduce yourself, everybody, and tell them what you do in the band. Just for the, in case somebody's watching this video and they have no idea who Isolated Ab is, but they, maybe, they like the, they, they, maybe they like my channel. I don't know. <laughs> Go ahead, Savannah. Um, so I'm Savannah, I'm the newest addition to Isolated Av. I am keyboard player and then I do some vocals as well. So, yeah. Cool, next. Uh, I'm Phil, uh, I play the bass for the band and a little bit of back. <laughs> Sorry, what? <laughs> <laughs> My name is Dylan. I play guitar and I sing. That's pretty much it. My name is cool. or Chris, and I play guitar and sing as well. Awesome. Sorry, which one was uh, Shappy? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he died. <laughs> no, no, Shappy's <laughs> uh, not here anymore. He left the band about how long ago? Uh, a year. A year. 
a year yeah. ago. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. Shabby was our last bass player. He left a year ago. Phil's been in with us for a year and change, I think, almost a year, a year. Right on. Okay. So then uh, getting back to the, the quarantine video, you had a seven-piece band. And was that the first time you were a seven-piece, or I mean, aside from rehearsals? Yeah. 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 So <laughs> okay. um, we got – so I used to be in a ska band in high school, and – John and Brian, the horn players, were both in that ska band. And uh, we just thought we could have used some horns on some stuff. So I hit them both up, asked if they wanted to play. Um, John plays a lot of uh, sax and trumpet on some songs on the new album. So he's also involved in that. Brian was just jumped on for the show. Um, but, you know. And stole the show, basically. <laughs> yeah. It's cowbell. <laughs> Honestly, um, you guys sounded very tight. It, 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 you wouldn't know that it was pretty much a, a recent add-on situation. So, good job, Extra Three. <laughs> <laughs> How is um, w were any songs written for that concert with seven people in mind, or it was more like, here's the music, figure out what you're doing? Uh, more like that. We write these really like heavy songs that we want a million layers on, and then we realize we only have four members, and now five. <laughs> So then we're scrambling around to make it sound cool live and not lame, you know, because on record it sounds cool with all the layers and then just us screaming into a mic and missing our cues. Been there, done that. Been there, done that for sure. Um, I, I remember I used to sing in a cover band and we when we started, it was a, um, a seven piece band and eventually became a four piece band because it just got it, I had to be a rehearsal Nazi. I had to be like, you know, guys, we have a show. I know that's a cool song, but come on, we got four hours to fill. Let's go. <laughs> um, and uh, it was the perfectly named band. It was Revolving Door. There you go. <laughs> Seven drummers ended up back at number two. Four keyboardists ended up with none of them. <laughs> yeah. Um, so now two of you are from Pennsylvania. And uh, what was the biggest difference between the scene in Las Vegas and the scene in PA? Um, I mean, a real big thing is what people are into here. There's a lot of like DJs and electronic music. Um, surprisingly, a lot of punk. Um, yes. We're used to like pretty much everything on the East Coast and all the cities are so much closer together. So it's a lot easier to hit a lot of big cities. Um, here, the closest city is like LA, which is four and a half hours away. So it's a little harder to get the music out there to the other uh, cities, but um, I think we've been doing a pretty good job. Definitely. Do, now, do you have any uh, transplant fans that were like, they knew you back then or back there and, and they ended up in this area as well. And, and so they're like, Hey, good to see you guys playing or whatever. Uh, we run into people once in a while, but it's usually when our friends from the East are coming to tour here and people will be in line that like followed them and they'll be like, Oh shit, it's you guys from all in that, which was our old band. That's ah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, really, that's really the only times I would say but I would say that's the biggest difference is just that how easy it was to get city to city you could be in a, another major city in an hour and a half and here you just don't have that luxury yeah 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 definitely um it, you mentioned the name of the band was all in that that's a perfect Vegas band name <laughs> that was years and years before I ever imagined I'd be living in this city too so just a coincidence all right on. Um, now, in your own words, your musical style is to not have a style, um, much like Bruce Lee's Tao of Jeet Kune Do, which is, you know, be like the nature of Wata. Um, are there any lines musically <laughs> that you just won't cross over into? Country. Uh, yeah. No, I don't know. We, <laughs> de we like for me. We got pretty close with the old time to go with the intro. What about Western? W what about what? Western. I don't really know what that constitutes personally. What, what would that be? It, it's an old Blues Brothers joke. Oh. <laughs> we have right. both kinds of music here, country and Western. <laughs> yeah. Um, I've, I've been a, a, a solo singer-songwriter. You know, I, my, of course, I started on acoustic guitar. Try as I might, I still had people telling me uh, it sounded kind of country, kind of Western, and I grew up on that stuff, so it just filtered in there. There was a little bit of a bleeding effect. But... Um, I've, I fought hard. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with, there's nothing wrong with country or Western music, <laughs> but don't, don't try to play it. If, if it's not who you are, you know, 
curious, Rucker. Anyway. <laughs> not that I dislike it. You know, it's not us. I mean, we're just the opposite of country, I feel like. Yeah, having heard your stuff, I was like, I, I, I couldn't imagine that. Um, also, probably not like the, the heavy metal hard stuff. Yeah, just, just well. over here. <laughs> oh, I mean, I mean <laughs> come on. All right. Now, uh, Chris, what, I know you're a self-confessed beer snob, <laughs> right? What's your take on Nevada's breweries? Yes, yes. But no. Oh. Banana, Banana bread. bread. Very good. <sighs> I, don't, I don't drink beer myself. I just, it's the hops. I, I can't stand it. So I'm, I'm a hard cider guy, personally. But I make sure to have some whiskey just in case. <laughs> good balance. Hmm. Yes, um, but Chris, uh, what's your take on Nevada's breweries and their products? Uh, I like Tanea. Tanea, how do you say that? Tanea. Ten- I believe it's a Tanea brewery. Tanea. Yeah, that's pretty good. I like that a lot. Um, what was the Joseph James is pretty good. Yeah, definitely like those. I mean, that's not a beer though. It is. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm I'm thinking of uh, cold cock whiskey. all right on um it's a different uh, back east it's a lot of porters and stouts and the heavy stuff which is more what i'm into out here it's a lot of lighter stuff and which i like too and ipas but some good ipas yeah (laughs) yeah it it does seem even though i'm I'm not a fan of beer it does seem like they're trying to cater to a lot you know it's vegas so they're trying to cater to a wide variety of of beer drinkers um without i guess um losing the identity of that particular brewery whether it's a microbrewery or a bigger operation so all right um i know that pretty much all of you i I don't know about savannah but i I don't know uh, i know that pretty much all of you enjoy sports uh are you any plans to rock out the new raiders stadium for halftime (laughs) great (laughs) yeah Um, that's right say again (laughs) We're featured as uh, the band of the uh, day at the Knights game before. It's true. It's true. Nice. Um, we're working on the Raiders. We're planning to do opening day for the Raiders, but they're not going to have fans. So <laughs> yeah, no, it was Metallica. Yeah. They went with Metallica for some reason. Well, first of all, <laughs> I, I work with some diehard Oakland Raiders fans, and they refuse to call them the Vegas Raiders. <laughs> they're like, no, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Second, second of all, I get why Metallica, you know, why they would get Metallica, but come on, Metallica, 49er games. That's your, you play the 49er games. Yeah, why are you doing that now? <laughs> <laughs> go Niners, go Niners. All right, um, I, I'm a Niners fan, by the way. <laughs> but uh, I'm not a, a, a rabid Niners fan, so I, I, I'm okay. I, like, I can... I can still like go to work and, and, and be productive and have a life if they lose, when they lose. <laughs> um, all right. How long have all of you been in Vegas? I'm, I, I realized that two of you came from Pennsylvania, what was it, like five years ago? Yeah, five. Okay. How about everybody else? Born and raised. Born and Sorry. raised. Sorry. Sorry for you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know if you got Savannah. Yeah, she's born and raised also. And uh, I've been here for three years now. Right. On. Where, where'd you move from? Uh, originally from San Jose, but then I moved to Washington, and then to Columbus, Ohio, and then I came here. So Quite the trip, yeah. I moved here actually from Walnut Creek. Walnut Creek. Is that in Ohio? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. You said San Jose. San Jose. I thought you meant San Jose, Bay Area of California. Yes, yes, but I, I, I am terrible with geography. I, oh, okay. Walnut <laughs> Creek is basically um, – <laughs> sorry, you got cut off? What? Uh, I said math, math is more his thing. He's a math professor. <laughs> ah, so where's the math rock? He's coming. Oh, He's true. Coming. <laughs> One Yana, two Yana, three eight Yana, boy. <laughs> right on. Um, so how long have you each been doing music individually? Um, I've been playing uh, for about 15 years, uh, and I've been in about three bands. Uh, this is the best one I've been in so far. So, <laughs> so far. <laughs> <laughs> Yet. Yet. <laughs> Yet. 
Nice. Just dig that hole, Matt. Um, I'm sorry. I forgot to, I forgot to clarify, uh, aside from how long you've been doing music individually, also like what'd you start on? What was your first instrument? Oh, uh, I started on bass and I, I've been playing that ever since. Uh, right on. Um, I've been playing drums for about like 20 years now. Um, I did play trombone as well for a little bit. Took a break to uh, focus on my trombone playing. And then <laughs> <laughs> I also dabble in a little guitar here and there, but mainly drums. And I've also been in three bands, I want to say. And I, I would say this is the best one. <laughs> oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've been playing music for like, I don't know, 13 years maybe. Started playing stand-up bass and orchestra then just learn guitar. Um, haven't learned how to sing yet. But, uh, <laughs> I'm trying to learn the drums, but that's not happening yet. <laughs> that's pretty much it. I've been in one other band in, in high school and in this one now. So. Yeah. Cool. Um, I've played music since I was like eight, so 20 years now. I started on bass, actually. That red bass behind Dylan is the very first guitar I ever got. Nice. Um, my parents didn't want to hear the drums or the guitar. They were too loud for them, so that's why I started on bass. Then I moved to guitar, and then I moved to keys, and then uh, an old bandmate of ours forced me into singing one day, and then I started singing. And uh, I've been in like four or five bands, and I've filled in for a bunch of bands before. That's about it. Cool. How about you, Savannah? Um, this is the first band I've ever been in. Um, I've done like throughout college, I did like coffee shop singing kind of gigs. Um, but I've been singing for fun just my whole life. Like, I think I had a care, I have a video of me doing karaoke when I was like four. Um, but I just was a kind of a choir kid, jazz, jazz choir kid. And then, um, I learned a little bit of piano when I took lessons. I think I was in elementary school and then that stopped about elementary school. And just kind of play for fun basically sing when I can for school things but it was fun because I didn't know that I would actually ever do music again and then that's why when they asked me to play with them it was really exciting so yeah nice all right cool um moving on from basically where you started musically um I was wondering if I you in other at least the four of you guys uh you've talked about in um interviews like kind of your musical influences and I was wondering what are your current musical influences? What's what's currently like getting you all jazzed up and ready to, to write new music or, or just play? Um, <laughs> it's a big question. Yeah. That's uh, why I ask it. It's yeah. always interesting because a lot of times you'll you'll it'll be like a you know, punk band, the most punk band you can imagine. And they're like, well, I'm really listening to like Macy Gray right now, and and you know, <laughs> and you're just like, right on, right on. <laughs> I think we all collectively really appreciate the music of Billie Eilish. <laughs> That's agreed upon. Yeah, I definitely appreciate her. Nice. I, I know that there's a collective, at least most of you, a collective Foo Fighters fandom, and, and me, me as well. I would love to, you know, in, be involved in any way, shape, or form with them or with something they're doing. But uh, I was just wondering, like, is there anything that people might be surprised by besides the Billie Eilish? <laughs> um, I'm a big Death Grips head, and I've been listening a lot of it's head. <laughs> I, I was, like, I'm mostly head. listening. I, I'm nowadays I mostly listen to like rap and hip hop and stuff, and not pretty much any like alternative music or anything like that. <laughs> it it's funny. I I find the same way. Like if I especially if I'm in a project where it's like uh, indie rock or you know it's a very it's a, a genre type thing, I don't want to listen to that necessarily. I want to listen to other stuff that, that gets me kind of thinking, hey, how can I incorporate this? Or, um, oh, I, I hear the same type of thing in this totally unrelated genre. How about you, Savannah? You, any any uh, musical skeletons in the closet? Uh, I feel like I probably have a completely different like musical style that I listen to than most of the guys because I'm more like folk, indie, alternative sound. But... Um, so that's been fun to try and figure out, like, as we're doing a bunch of songwriting right now, is how I can 
contribute without it with it being in the genre of the band even though in my head it's like running through a meadow so um <laughs> I <laughs> that's kind of where I'm at but it's it's fun because I, I listen to any genre basically so it's all new to me so I'm it's yeah <laughs> right on all right um moving on from influences let's talk shows now Savannah you've got basically one show under your belt with the band I think like one and a half Okay. I played one song with another show, but basically, yeah. <laughs> but that quarantine concert is pretty much your favorite show with the band. Yeah. Uh, the rest of you guys, what would you say is like your best show memory uh, as a as a band in this band? Something that was either like that was a really really you know great reception or really cool or hey I almost went to jail or you know any of that stuff. <laughs> uh, I, I would say our last House of Blue show, our very last show before this. Uh, Awesome. quarantine concert thing that was, it was just it was packed i mean i went to see the silver sun pickups like two nights after it and we had more people there wow like, nice that's us i mean the other bands playing also but like there were more people there for our show and i i think we all just vibed really well and it was nice that we played for with another band that they were just incredible and super cool dudes and actually uh the the lead singer of that band actually joined us on stage for uh for a rendition of pony uh by genuine <laughs> it was awesome wow <laughs> amazing voice and been <laughs> uh, what was the name of that band do you remember marionette a marionette okay i haven't heard of them but that's okay they probably haven't heard of me so, or even <laughs> anybody else got a, like a favorite band me- or you know show memory favorite show memory there's honestly a lot one of the one of the best was definitely when uh, at the end of our show our old bass player not him tried mm-hmm. to make a backflip and <laughs> completely just missed it and we honestly thought he was dead and that's how we were ending our set. Wow. But then he, he was really fine. So yeah, he biffed it pretty hard, landed right on his neck, and that's how, oh. we, that's how we had to get Bill. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> that's. I mean. That's something like straight out of uh, Nirvana or something. <laughs> Chris, you know, throwing his bass in the air and nailing himself in the head. Um, okay, moving on from favorite show memory. Is there a favorite venue you have? And it doesn't have to be one you played in. It can just be one. What's your, you know, like your favorite sh- venue in Vegas for live music? Me personally, I really like the Brooklyn Bowl. We've never played there, but when I go there, it's probably my favorite place. I've worked there, never i've heard stories uh, some good stories about how they treat musicians but I, I have yet to be inside because every time i find myself kind of in the area and i'm like hey i got i have a free night i mean i i'm married i got a kid i have a full-time job so it's it's you know it's hard but there are times where i'm just like i'm going out tonight i'm gonna see what 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 happens see maybe i'll you know maybe i'll end up on stage who knows and anytime i'm near the brooklyn bowl i'll see is it open to the public and it's always a private event? That's how every time for me too. I went in once and I was 18, so I could only go in at like a certain time. Uh, that was years ago. And I, I, yeah, I haven't seen it recently at all. <laughs> yeah. But like you see who's playing there and you see the shows. And, and I've, like I said, I've had people on that have, um, that have worked it and also that have done, you know, performances there. And they treat the musicians like gold apparently back there. And uh, apparently they got like some of the best fried chicken in the, in the state, in the country or something. Um, anybody else favorite uh, venue for live music? Oh, the Double Down. <laughs> Down. <laughs> we played the Double Down a few times and it's just always a good time. So, it's on the very other end of the spectrum of yeah. the Broken Bowl, but. A little bit. Little bit. Uh, that surprises me because when I was fronting an indie rock band and we were throwing a bunch of stuff against the walls, see what sticks, Double Down was like, you know, if you're not you're not punk, we're not we don't want you. They like yeah, a lot. We, yeah, we played there and uh, we needed like a band hit us up asking if they wanted uh, if we wanted to play with them, and they told us that they needed another band, a third band to get on the bill, and I hit up my friend in like a jazz like quartet band like it was just sick dude like playing smooth jazz way better than us way better than <laughs> us like the, the vibe and the double down like a midnight with like a jazz band playing up there like it was super cool but so, I, so people were cool about it they were receptive oh yeah everyone oh, yeah. 
loved it. Well, it's, I, it's always a great crowd there. I think what's cool about the double down is it's always you bringing your own people and it feels more like a house party. Like every yeah. time we've done it, it's been 30 or 40 of our people and it's free entry. So they just come in and all get hammered and everyone's sloppy by the end of the night. And then we're stumbling, bringing our gear out to the cars and it's just like a great night. Yeah. And, and the greatest Las Vegas musician oh. has a residency there. That's true. Gold Top Bob. <laughs> Shout out Gold to Top Bob. Bob. I got to get him on the channel. <laughs> <laughs> right how about you savannah any live music uh, ve venues you, you're digging on uh i would say the only, the first place that came to my mind and i don't know it's not like it, it doesn't pop to my mind as my favorite or anything but i think i was just thinking about when i've actually gone to see them play before i was in the band um because they played it i say it wrong every time the pa pasty pasty pub Patsy oh. Pub, <laughs> what is it called? I don't know, but I, that was really fun for me. And there were not a lot of people there. I can't hear you guys. What'd you say? It's Cornish Patsy. Ah, that's ah. it. Oh, pubs in Salt Lake City. It's a sandwich joint. Um, yeah, that place was fun because that was one of the first shows after I think I turned twenty-one. So that was just a cool venue for me as someone watching. I don't know as far as like the musician standpoint, but I remember thinking that was a nice little place. But yeah, I've never really performed in venues or done anything, so I, I like anything that I can see live music at, no matter where it's at, so. Right on. All right, uh, moving on from uh, favorite venues, let's talk gear. And we'll start with the drummer, because they're gear whores, and they always want to get into all minutia and stuff, so we'll get you out of the way. Yeah, minus the gear part. <laughs> so, what, what, uh, obviously, it's a little different right now. I, I can't say what are you rocking right now at a show, because, eh. But uh, when you do a show, let's talk about your gear. Let, you know, let, so put, let's just assume someone's like, man, I, let, I dig his sound. How do I get that sound? I want you to break it down, man. You know, heads and, and sticks and, and... I can do it all. It's yeah, all so by all means, everybody just take a drink. You know, take a moment. Sit back and relax. And let's, let's listen to... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't hear you. Uh, nothing. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> But by all means, whatever you want to talk about, you know, any sponsorships you got or whatever, by all means, roll it out. So um, for, for shells, I definitely love the sound of maple drums. Mm. Uh, I use a, a sonar a force maple kit. Uh, I've had it for quite a while now, and it's just a super reliable kit. And the maple just has a really nice warm sound. And then um, for cymbals, I usually use Zildjian, um, the A Custom series. And then for drum heads, uh, for everyone that's interested in that, I always use the uh, Remo clear pinstripes and then a coated ambassador head, head for the snare drum. And yeah, for the sticks, I always stick with Pro Marks because they're super reliable and I'm a pretty, pretty heavy hitter. Um, those don't really break very often. Oh, there we go. And then for uh, the cowbell. I use a Latin percussion bel diablo, <laughs> the most important part of the entire setup. Truly. Um, bass drum pedal, direct drive, got to keep it smooth. And that's pretty much it. <laughs> was that your cowbell he was playing in the quarantine concert? It was indeed. Wow. Ah. That's El Diablo <laughs> <Yeah>. himself. <laughs> it's a <stretch> <laughs> the El Diablo red cowbell. Nice. Um, uh oh, it looks like Armenia is going to end in 10 minutes. Damn you, Zoom. <laughs> so, um, sorry, we're, we're going to streamline the, the gear here real quick. Um, basically, actually, let's, let's, let's dump that question because this is more important. Let's pretend you're talking to a new musician, someone who's come to your show, had a blast, and wants to know, how do I be like you? <laughs> so, if you can just give them one piece of advice, and don't say change your strings. If you can say one piece of advice of, you know, something they need to know about getting into you know the music scene here and or or becoming a better musician or just taking care of themselves whatever you want to say that you wish someone had told you when you started you know actually playing music out uh for me i'd say i wish somebody told me to not drink as much and actually focus more on the music and you know yeah yeah <laughs> actually get be a master at your instrument and not just get drunk and try to get girls when you're 18 years old but i wish someone really came around early and told me that yeah, to quote Dave Grohl, when you start taking the whiskey bottle to the stage. <laughs> Shows me and Matt back in the day. <laughs> hey, good memories. 
That, that's the problem is sometimes you don't remember them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, next. Um, I don't know. I just tell a younger person getting into it to um, just find people that are fun to play with and have fun playing it. And then from there, you know, whatever happens, happens. But as long as you're having fun, you're having fun. And then other people are uh, drawn to that. I think that's one of our big draws on our live show is that, I mean, we're just up there having a good time. And, you know, we're probably not the most polished, uh, you know, tight band out there. But, I mean, if you have energy and you're having a good time, that's that's a key thing in my eyes. So just find people that are fun to play with. Cool. Next. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say, um, one thing I've definitely learned from uh, Jam with these guys is, Try and listen to what's popular right now, and and try and incorporate them to what you're what you're writing. If you have a different style that, than what's popular right now, just make sure you have a bunch of like you listen to a bunch of different genres to figure out like how to incorporate things. That's one of my favorite things about this band is that uh, everyone here loves to bring from every different genre and, and try and meld it to a nice melting pot. It's really cool. So that that that's definitely really made me a better musician is trying to listen to different types of music that I'm cool. not. No. Cool. Um, for me, I've been that person that was like, Oh, I want to do music, but I don't really know. And I, you know, talk to my friends and bands or my family members. And I'm like, I want to do that, but I don't know how. So being that I was that person, I guess my advice would be, um, if you have an opportunity to join or do something, just to do it because I think for so long I was scared to put myself out there at all and so um just start doing something or say yes to an opportunity if it comes up and don't be scared because even now like songwriting I'm nervous and I just I'm trying you know so I guess just don't be scared just keep pushing yourself to do it so. that's actually great advice and it was all really great advice um did we get everybody yeah oh sorry <laughs> It's like the man in black. Um, I, I would say my biggest advice would be uh, just find people to play with and just play with other people because that'll make you better so much faster than just sitting in a room by yourself thinking that you're getting better. Um, and then just get out there and play because when you first start playing, it really doesn't matter when you're playing bars and shit. Just have fun. When you're eventually like getting to the stage where you're playing the House of Blues and stuff, then you want to have your shit together. But before that, Get out there and just play and have fun with it. And honestly, just find other people that love music and just play as much as possible. I couldn't agree more. Um, it's you reach a point where you just have to take that leap and just be like, I need to jump in the in the deep end here and and you know flail around a little bit. Um, for me, it was when I decided, okay, I'm going to try a three piece band where I'm the front man and the guitarist and the singer. I'd never done it. I always had that, cr that kind of like being able to step back and I'm just the rhythm guitarist or I'm just the singer, you know, or both of those, but I'm never like the, the guitar, the soloist. I'm never the musical director, so to speak. And um, that was, it was a learning experience and I'm glad I did it. But I, the, the band, I, unfortunately, thanks to COVID, we haven't seen each other in for, you know, months, but um, it, I'm in a jazz band and I'm just the singer. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Not just You're more than that. Let me refer, let me rephrase <laughs> it. I only have to sing in this band, <laughs> and it's it's freeing me up. Um, it, 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 there's it, in a jazz type band, jazz standards, Sinatra, Tony Bennett, that type of stuff. You work the crowd as the singer. That's what you want to do. You know, I even got like an old the old sure old style sure mic. So uh, we'll we'll get it going. But um, in the meantime, thank you very much for coming on the show, guys. I really do appreciate it. And I hope that we've given your fans a little bit of insight into who you are off the stage. Thank you so much for watching. And stick around. We're going to have a little music video from them. And uh, I'll be back after that. Wake up, not believing your are so deceiving.
Thank you for watching. Uh, make sure you click the link down in the description for you know all their social media. If you want to see any more videos like this, go ahead and click here. If you want to subscribe, you know what to do. Click down there and uh, ring the bell so you'll know when I post new videos such as this. Please, please make sure you check out Isolated App. Have a great day. And uh, remember to be amazing. Stay strong, stay safe, stay supportive, and we'll see you next time on Room 6.